Good day everyone, welcome to Science 10. So we are now in our continuation for week 5 entitled The Effects of Electronic Radiations on Living Things and Environment. We are now to proceed to lesson 2 which is the risk of ionizing radiations. Ionizing radiations and its risk. Ionizing radiation takes a few forms, the alpha, beta, and neutron particles, and gamma and x-rays. All types are caused by unstable atoms, which have either an excess of energy or mass, or both. In order to reach a stable state, they must release that extra energy or mass in the form of radiation. It is well known that high doses of ionizing radiation can cause harm, but there is continuing scientific uncertainty about effects at low doses. So let us know first what is alpha radiation. Alpha radiation occurs when an atom undergoes radioactive decay, giving off a particle consisting of two protons and two neutrons. Changing the originating atom to one of an element with an atomic number 2 less and atomic weight 4 less than it started with. Due to their charge and mass, alpha particles interact strongly with matter and only travel a few centimeters in air. Alpha particles are unable to penetrate the outer layer of dead skin cells but are capable if an alpha-emitting substance is ingested in food or air of causing serious cell damage. The health effect from exposure to alpha particles depends greatly on how a person is exposed. So this is an image of the alpha radiation. Alpha particles lack the energy to penetrate even the outer layer of skin. So, exposure to the outside of the body is not a major concern. Inside the body, however, they can be very harmful. If alpha emitters are inhaled, swallowed, or get into the body through a cut, the alpha particles can damage sensitive living tissue. The way these large, heavy particles cause damage makes them more dangerous than other types of radiation. The ionizations they cause are very close together. They can release all their energy in a few cells. This results in more severe damage to cells and DNA. Next is the beta radiation. Beta radiation takes the form of either an electron or a positron being emitted from an atom. Due to the smaller mass, it is able to travel further in air up to a few meters and can be stopped by a thick piece of plastic or even a stack of paper. It can penetrate skin a few centimeters, posing somewhat of an external health risk. However, the main threat is still primarily from internal emission from ingested material. Beta particles are more penetrating than alpha particles but are less damaging to living tissues and DNA because the ionizations they produce are more widely spaced. This is an image of the beta radiation. They travel farther in air than alpha particles that can be stopped by a layer of clothing or by a thin layer of a substance such as Aluminum. Some beta particles are capable of penetrating the skin and causing damage such as skin burns. However, as with alpha emitters, beta emitters are most hazardous when they are inhaled or swallowed. Next is the gamma radiation. Gamma radiation, unlike alpha or beta, does not consist of any particles, instead consisting of a photon of energy being emitted from an unstable nucleus. Having no mass or charge, gamma radiation can travel much farther through air than alpha or beta, losing half its energy for every 500 feet. Gamma waves can be stopped by a thick or dense enough layer material with high atomic number material such as lead or depleted uranium being the most effective form of shielding. So this is an image of a gamma radiation. The extremely high energy of gamma rays allows them to penetrate just about anything. They can even pass through bones and teeth. This makes gamma rays very dangerous. They can destroy living cells, produce gene mutations, and cause cancer. Ironically, the deadly effects of gamma rays can be used to treat cancer. In this type of treatment, a medical device ends out Focus gamma rays that target cancerous cells. The gamma rays kill the cells and destroy the cancer. Let's proceed now to X-rays. X-rays are similar to gamma radiation, with the primary difference being that they originate from the electron cloud. This is generally caused by energy changes in an electron, 
such as moving from a higher energy level to a lower one, causing the excess energy to be released. X-rays are longer wavelength and lower energy than gamma radiation as well. X-rays can cause mutations in our DNA and therefore might lead to cancer later in life. For this reason, X-rays are classified as a carcinogen by both the World Health Organization or WHO and the United States government. While X-rays are linked to a slightly increased risk of cancer, there is an extremely low risk of short-term side effects. Exposure to high radiation levels can have a range of effects such as vomiting, bleeding, fainting, hair loss, and the loss of skin and hair. However, X-rays provide such a low dose of radiation that they are not believed to cause any immediate health problems. So this is an image of the X-ray particle. The use of X-rays and radioactive materials in science, medicine, and industry led to the recognition documented by reports of radiation burns that radiation exposure, although helpful for the diagnosis and treatment of disease, might also be harmful and protective measures were taken to limit exposure. All X-rays are dangerous because they can damage healthy living cells of the body. This is the reason why frequent exposure to X-rays should be avoided. Too much exposure to X-rays can damage body tissues and can cause cancer. Lastly is the neutron radiation. It consists of a free neutron, usually emitted as a result of a spontaneous or induced nuclear fission. Able to travel hundreds or even thousands of meters in air, they are, however, able to be effectively stopped if blocked by a hydrogen-rich material, such as concrete or water. Not typically able to ionize an atom directly due to their lack of a charge, neutrons most commonly are indirectly ionizing, in that they are absorbed into a stable atom, thereby making it unstable and more likely to emit off ionizing radiation of in another type. Neutrons are, in fact, the only type of radiation that is able to turn other materials radioactive. In health physics, neutron radiation is a type of radiation hazard. So this is an image of a neutron radiation with the emission of a neutron from the nucleus of an atom. So this is the illustration of the types of ionizing radiation on which it shows how the particles penetrate to different substances, like for example, the alpha rays, with these two protons and two, and two neutrons, it penetrates more on the first surface of a paper. Beta rays, with its high energy electrons, can penetrate until the thin aluminum. Gamma rays, with its high energy electromagnetic radiation, can be stopped to penetrate until the thick lead, as well as the X-ray. And then the neutron rays can penetrate with its free neutrons, can penetrate until the substance of water or concrete on which it will be stopped by the said substance. So that would be all for our lesson. I hope that you have learned something about it. Thank you, keep safe always, and God bless.